Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today we are going to be talking about Cura 5. So I thought I'd do a video explaining all the new features and how they actually stack up to Cura 4. So let's not waste any more time and just get right into the video. Alright, so in this video I want to cover two of the biggest things about Cura 5 and the differences between 5 and 4. The first one, I'm going to be talking about the slicing engine. And then the second one right here, they explain the print time can be up to 20% faster. And I'm going to test that and see. So coming back to the slicing engine, they are now running Cura on Arachne engine. And if you don't understand what the engine is that's driving the software, a direct comparison could be if you have a truck and it's being run by a Hemi. It's essentially the core of what makes the software do what it does. Just like an, a Hemi is, that's the engine that makes the truck go. So let's go ahead and jump into the software. So I have this little funnel here, and I have it very small because I really want to show you the differences between the slicing engine now. So I have this on my Ender 3 Pro settings and this is with the new Arachne engine. Now this is completely different than how it used to be. It's going to look the exact same on the outside, like the skin, the settings, the tools, all of that is pretty much the exact same but it's when you're slicing it, that is when you're going to see the big differences. And there's a few big key things when it comes to the differences of this new Arachne engine. So one of the big things here is the new wall thickness. So in the past, your wall thickness had to be divisible by your nozzle diameter. So if you had a .04 wall thickness, you would have to go .04, 0.08 and then 0.12 so let's say that the 0.08 and 0.12 that you had a wall thickness that was in between that so Cura would actually not be able to fill that in between gap alright so I have them both sliced and we can easily see with the wall thickness what the differences are so in the past in Cura 4 which we're in right now if you had a wall thickness that was not divisible by your nozzle diameter, you would actually have some weird infills here. And sometimes it wouldn't even fill it in. Uh, there would be gaps. And you can see here that it doesn't quite know how to fill this in. So it actually has a thick line right here. But then when it gets to the edges, it starts going back and forth and you've got some gaps here and this is where your walls can actually kind of peel apart if you've ever printed a thin box that the they'll actually peel apart because they don't bond together because it can't get it close enough together because it can't do that math now in the new engine it has a variable wall thickness and you can see here that it fills it in perfectly and with the new Arachne engine, it will compensate for that wall thickness because it will push out more filament or it'll push out less filament, which is amazing, especially on corners and any kind of thing that's really in between that. So you can see that this will be a lot stronger of a bond versus this one. So the variable wall thickness is a really cool feature to be able to get some of those thinner walls or if you've got a thicker wall that's not in that magic number to be able to be in your certain thickness because of your nozzle diameter, it just would not have as good of a bond. But here, it's completely different of how it acts. So you can see that the red is the shell and the green is the inner wall. So that's one cool thing about the new engine is just how it treats its corners and you don't have these weird gaps like you do right here. So the next thing is Ultimaker says that Cura 5 can now handle smaller prints to get better details than Cura 4. 
So there's a lot of people out there that's been printing really tiny benchies, and a benchy is a nice little test, but I figured I want to actually use a real model to see what it's actually going to do. There's a lot more variances in a model like this than a benchy. Now, there are overhangs and everything like that, and I'm honestly ignoring them for these purposes. So this is without supports. Now, you see here I've got them in Cura 4 and I've got it in Cura 5. Now, this is printed at a 10% scale, which is 31 millimeters tall. Then I have a 7%, which is 22 millimeters tall. Then a 5% at 15 millimeters tall. And then the tiniest one is only down to 3%, which is nine and a half millimeters tall. So this is very tiny. Now, I went ahead and sliced both of these, and when you look at the preview for Cura 5 and the preview for Cura 4, now, Cura 4 surprisingly looks a lot cleaner, but it skips a lot of things because when Cura 4 gets small details, it will just completely ignore them because it can't print them out properly. So let's zoom in here and notice back and forth here what's going on. So here, it's actually doing a pretty good job. It just can't figure out how to print the tip of the nozzle, the tip of the blade, and that's pretty much it. It looks pretty good. So when I jump over here in Cura 5, it says it can print smaller things, but if you look at this sword, it is missing it a bunch. And then let's move on to the smaller ones. So you can see here, it's also the sword is kind of, you know, spotty, the tip of the barrel, and there's some things in the back that aren't printing. So if we jump over to Cura 4, you can see now the sword was spotty, but in Cura 4, it isn't even there. It can't figure out how to print it. So if we move to the next smaller one, the tongue is a little bit missing and also the sword is still gone the bottom of the sword is pretty much gone and if we come over to five you can see it gets the bottom of the sword it gets chunks of the swords in the back and the tongue now if we go to the very smallest and realizing this is kind of ridiculous to try to print something this small it gets a good chunk of the tongue, it gets a good bit of the swords, hilts in the back, and if we jump over here, it doesn't even recognize any of it. There's a few spots right here, so it'll get the main figure, but anything else, like after the hand right here, it's all gone. So jumping over, you can see it's actually handling it pretty well. Granted, I don't think I would ever try to print something this small in FDM. I would just jump to resin if I needed to print something like this. But it does handle it just a little bit better. But it's hard to tell when you're jumping back and forth because like the arms are looking good, the face is looking good, but the tongue kind of stops. You can see it gets the tongue and it gets the arms and chest pretty well. But when it comes down to it, I still just think printing really tiny things in FDM is it's just not meant for it. This should help you get some details in your models like when they have fine details, but when it comes down to it, I still just I don't know. I just don't think you should be printing this small when it comes to FDM printers. All right, so the last big thing about Cura 5 is they claim that it will print up to 20% faster. Now, it doesn't say that it's going to print 20% faster, it just says up to. So some of your prints might not be a whole lot faster, but it should be a little bit faster. So I went ahead and I took this Flexi Fox and I scaled him as big as I could get him on the print bed. And there are no supports, and what I'm using as my base is just the standard quality and I figured their base settings is probably what they're basing those numbers off of. So this is just the standard quality at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Now, I went ahead and sliced this in both slicers to see which is faster. 
Now, this one says it's going to take 16 hours and one minute, which isn't bad. Now, when I jump over to Cura 4, it's going to take 16 hours and 46 minutes. It is really not that big of a jump. So 45 minutes is not that big of a jump in speed when we're talking about 16 hours. That is actually only 5% faster. So we're not at 20% yet, but this is 5% faster. So if you're looking for getting a little bit faster, so far, just on my first test, it was 5% faster. Now, the one thing that I did consider is this is multiple models on the bed. Even though it's all one piece, these are all separate. So if I go in to slice it, you can see here. So if I go and slice it, when you're really looking at this, this is the amount of different things that it keeps jumping to. So same thing on here. So the one thing I did consider is when I'm put, the one thing I did consider about this model is it's actually multiple models. So there are multiple files that all connect because it's a flexi and it's all interconnected. But these are all the different parts that it is printing. So it's having to jump back and forth. So now I wanted to jump to Stan Lee here because he is a single model and there's not a lot of jumping back and forth when it comes to this. So it's just going to keep printing. It's just jumping between legs, but then when it gets up here, it's just going to be printing the whole thing. Now this is still with the standard quality. And what I've done, <clears throat> and this is still with the standard quality at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. And all I've done is added supports to this. Now this says it's going to take one day 23 hours and 21 minutes, which is about 47 hours to print this thing out, which isn't terrible because if you see here, it's almost the full height of my Ender 3. So this is a big print. Now, jumping over to Cura 5, one day, five hours, 10 minutes, which is ridiculous. This is so much faster using these standard settings. They're the exact same settings which means Cura 5 can print this model 38% faster. So they said up to 20%, this is 38%. They were being modest because I cannot believe how fast that this can print. I can have this thing done in just over a day. So Cura 5 is definitely starting to pull ahead. Now I'm wanting to test one more model. So everything that I was testing was with the base settings. So I really wanted to see with my personal settings, is this going to be faster or is it down to what Cura has set up as their base settings? So I'm using my best supports profile that is high quality. So I'm printing it at a 0.12 millimeter layer height. So I went ahead and I have this Ninja Turtle Raphael that I was wanting to test out. And this is printed at a 0.12 millimeter layer height. And these are just using my normal settings for good supports and high quality. And this says it's going to take 22 hours and 34 minutes to print this. And you can see I have my supports here and everything looks really nice. It's supporting it pretty well. So that was at 22 hours and 34 minutes. Now, jumping over to Cura 5, it is 22 hours and 4 minutes. Now, that's not a whole lot faster. It's only 3% faster to print this in Cura 5. But it is faster. And Ultimaker didn't guarantee that everything is going to be faster. It said up to 20% faster. And 3% is well within those means. So which brought me to start thinking about, is there something in their base settings that make things print faster? So I went ahead and did super quality at a 0.12 millimeters and to see if it would actually print faster than my preferred profile. And it honestly didn't. It increased the time to one day, two hours and 20 minutes versus my 22 hours of print time. So looking through it, they have slower wall speeds 
and they have a higher infill. This is at 20%. I had mine at 8% because I just feel like for the size of these parts, I don't need a huge amount of infill. So once I tested this super quality and got that much time, I was wondering what it would be in Cura 4. So I went to Cura 4, did the exact same thing, did super quality and added supports, and I got one day, three hours, and 16 minutes. Which means, just on those default settings, once again, it's 3% faster to print it in Cura 5. Which led me to believe when you have multiple files on your build plate, Cura 5 is a little bit faster, but it's not that much faster. Just a little bit. But when you have individual models and it's not having to jump around, that is where your time saving is going to be. So to test that conclusion, I really wanted to just see with this same part if I printed one at a time. So printing just the top torso part of this, it is going to take five hours and nine minutes. But jumping over to Cura 4, it's going to take five hours and 24 minutes. So this is actually 5% faster in Cura 5. Now it was 3% faster, which leads me to believe that when you have multiple files on your build plate, you're going to be printing a little slower. It's not going to be getting up to those up to 20%. But you saw earlier, we had a model that was up to 38% faster, but it was a single model on the build plate. When you have a bunch of pieces on your build plate, that is really where you're going to be slowing down. I'm not saying that you need to be printing everything individually, but you can print a little bit faster. And it'll only be faster if you're like there right when it finishes and then you're swapping out and printing the next piece. So the, the time savings of printing a bunch of files separately versus all at once is really negligible because Cura 5 is still going to be printing it faster. So there's definitely some new features in Cura that is worth switching over, at least to have it installed. You don't have to fully use it. You can run Cura 4 and 5 at the same time. So if you don't want to get rid of it right now, you don't have to, but you can at least get Cura 5 and see what you like about it. But I know personally for me, I'm leaving version 4 on my computer while having version 5. Just so I can go back and forth and see the comparisons and what's different. It still shocks me to see how fast certain prints will be. And then other prints are just a little bit faster. But still, faster's faster. I will take 2% over 0% every day. And that's it for today. I wish you all a great day, and I will see you all in the next video.